Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amovi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by one of the bright young talents in the game today in MLS, Columbus Crew winger Derek Etienne Jr. Uh, we'll be getting to know all about Derek, talking about his career, and learning more about his off-pitch endeavors. Derek, how you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be on the show, man. I'm got a little goosebumps. Yeah, appreciate having you, man. <laughs> nah, thank you for taking the time, man. You know, we start off with true truths and a, two truths and a cap. So I know L's going to give you guys give you the rundown real quick. All right, Derek. So we play a nice little icebreaker game here called Two Truths and a Cap. This is a game where you'll tell us three facts about yourself. Two will be true, one will be a lie, and I'm Moby and I have to guess what the lie is. So. Where we at, Moby? We still one up, one zero. Yeah, well, one zero. We got we okay. got bamboozled last week by Taylor, <laughs> but uh... <laughs> yeah. So All we right. played okay. about five five times this year so far. Um, mm -hmm. We've only we've only scored one point, so Moby's up one zero on me. So hopefully, I can get some points this week. So whenever you're ready. Okay, um, I was dunked on in a um, my tryout for my eighth grade basketball team. Um, my sister, a uh, used to do my homework for me, even though she's younger than me. And let me see what's a I need, I need a good one to really make you. I think when we uh, won Supporter Shield, my dad looked at me and and screamed out a movie line: "Who's the wild man now?" What? Yo. Yeah. Okay, this is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. Eighth, eighth grade Duncan. You may I mean, you know, you got some New York ties, so strong yeah. basketball. Team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like seventh graders Duncan, so that, that's, that ain't far fetched. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, sister doing sister. his homework. That seemed like it could be true, but I also think you're probably a good student. You know what I'm saying? Like, You think so? You know, strong Haitian household. <laughs> you know, education is key. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to give our people the benefit of the doubt. You know what I mean? Um, what you going with? I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with the homework thing. I think that's cap. That's a pretty good one. I think I think you might have, like, bribed your sister to do your homework and so you can, like, so practice soccer and, like, focus on soccer. Your sister might be, like, a child prodigy or genius, and she would definitely do it. Basketball, that's realistic, but I don't even see you, like, playing basketball outside of just, like, at recess. And then I know you have a pretty good – a pretty close relationship with your dad. He played soccer. I feel like he would say something in French, like so no one else could understand. He was like talking mess. So Cap, I'm going with uh, the last one. Your dad didn't say this movie quote that you just said. Who's the wild man now? That's that's the one. <laughs> that's the cap. <laughs> My guy, respect. <laughs> You see, you see how I broke that down? <laughs> it was smart. It was smart. Yeah, Mo, Mo be getting more, more and more strategic every yeah. week. So, so let, let's get into it. Obviously, you know, I remember I was in trial with uh, Red Bulls and you was there. And it was when you guys had a bunch of young guys, you, Tyler Adams, Alex Mule, Sean Davis. And I was just mm -hmm. amazed at how competitive you guys were at a young age. And it just speaks to, you know, where all you guys are doing uh, right now. But when yeah. did you first fall in love with soccer? Um, I'll say I fell in love with it when I, uh, 2000, 2002, my dad uh, won a USO Cup. He won MVP. And, like, I think that was the moment I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. Like, I want to I wanna experience this. This is mad fun to me, all the, all the emotions and all that stuff. So I think that's when I actually like fell in love. I always liked it being around my dad and stuff, but I think at that moment it really like set something inside me to to want to actually uh want to do that. 
Most definitely. So did your dad take you like to all the games or was it like a, once you reached a certain age, he would bring you like to the locker room and to the games and stuff like that? When I was younger, he would let me go until like after games, I'd be in the locker room. A um, couple of times I walked on the field. It was the mascot, walked on the field, might have been a ball boy. But I think it wasn't until I got to like nine, ten, when he actually started like bringing me around. Like summertime, it was, yeah, I was wake up, go to Long Island with uh, with him, be there. I met actually that's when I met uh Wilmer Cabrera, uh Giovanni Savarisi. He played with those guys, so like uh played with a couple of their kids and all that stuff after practice and all that stuff. So probably about eight, nine, ten years old when I actually got to really experience the day to day life. But most of the time, it was just games. Uh, most definitely. So you come from a rich soccer background. You mentioned some, you know, key figures in U.S. soccer today with, you know, Coach Gio, Coach Wilmer. Um, mm -hmm. You're of Haiti descent. But give us the origin story because you were born in, you know, two up, two down VA. Um, yeah. Raised in Jersey. Um, give us the, give it this rundown to, you mm -hmm. know, where you are today now. So, um, yeah, like you said, I was born in Richmond, Virginia. Uh my dad um, played for Richmond Kickers, so he. But it's time time to move on. So uh, he went to uh, Long Island in 2001. So that's where I I moved up um, to to Jersey, and then I lived in Patterson from that time until until I was until I moved out. So probably until I was 20, I was in Patterson. But uh, yeah, my mom's from, mom's from there, grandmother's there, and all that stuff. So I I was able to. Um, to to know just you know, kick it out there in Patterson. Not, at that time, I really didn't know about like the soccer that went on there. Um, not a lot of pe people in Patterson. Patterson pr uh, predominantly, you know, baseball or football or, or basketball. So um, that's when I got into basketball. But uh, so, but I was uh, about around that all the time. Had a little youth teams that I would play for. And then when I was, I think, ten years old, we played this team called Livingston Lions, and these guys killed us, like smacked us like seven nothing. The most like one of the most embarrassing like times. I'm like, yo, I need to go play with these guys. So I went, tried out, made the team. And I ended up meeting like two guys who are probably like my closest friends, Malcolm Dixon and Wesley Wade, uh, who ended up eventually went to Red Bull with me. But we like played for like two years and then I was I felt like it was ready to jump to the that, you know, that pro uh, environment. So at twelve I went to Red Bull. And I was there until um, I signed my homegrown deal. No, oh, that's amazing. So, all right. So we have a lot of guys from the DMV that come on our show. Um, they claim mm -hmm. like DMV has the best talent. You were born in Virginia. Obviously, you grew up there, raised in Jersey. Patterson specifically is more focused on other sports, but Jersey has a long history of, you know, yeah. soccer talent. And then mm -hmm. you played for Red Bulls growing up. So yeah. where... What's you ranking the three cities and then overall in terms of youth de youth development? Um, you mean I okay. Uh I'm gonna say Jersey has more talent. Okay, why? Because I the I'm just thinking about just academy wise, all the players that I've played with, I think for my U sixteen team alone, I think there's like eighteen kids who are are professionals right now. Mm -hmm. And that's just for my my team. That's not even including guys who, you know, quit, you know, didn't feel like playing soccer, didn't take it serious. So I'm going to – and that's not even – and that's just North Jersey. I'm not even talking about South Jersey where where um, you have some other guys. So I would I'd probably say I, – I think I'd have to say North Jersey because I just know – I'm just thinking about if I had to do an 11 v. 11 between guys from the DMV and the guys from Jersey that I know. Jersey's, Jersey's Jersey's kicking up, yeah. Oh, for real, okay. Yeah, so, I, yeah. When you come back, when you go back home to the off season, you like you got good numbers, like Jersey. Jersey oh yeah, pickup is, Jersey got good numbers. Yeah, like Jersey. That. Any, any, you can bring some of the New York guys, but Jersey, yeah, Jersey got some numbers. Jersey oh. got numbers, yeah. Like it gets right. competitive out there, for real, for real. All right, respect. You, you one of the first people from Jersey we've had on the show, and you know, obviously, like. The history of Jersey soccer, it's it's mm -hmm. it's crazy. You know, Claudio Arena, Tab Ramos, Burhalter, yeah. you know, Bruce Arena, Bob Bradley. Um, but mm -hmm. when you say it like that, it makes us want to like set this 11, 11 aside. Like if, we, if we set the eleven <laughs> aside of it, might get it might get out of hand. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like I'm just thinking, I've never lost to DC United. 
I've never lost, and I didn't lose at DC United when I academy, Richmond Kickers, Magic. Like, I'm thinking about all the, just that, I didn't, Baltimore Bays. Mm-hmm. Um, like, all those teams, like, I didn't lose to none of them growing up. Respect. And, so so I, talk- and that's just North Jersey, like I said. I can't even say, speak for South Jersey. So Yeah, so let's talk about that, you know, at a, at a young at a, at a young age, you were playing at a very high level, you know, then you, you blossom mm-hmm. into the Red Bulls Academy. Talk about that experience, you know, for being one of the, at one of the clubs that, you know, prioritize youth development, at least at the time, uh, mm-hmm. your, your age group, your, your peers were some of the first ones that went pro and actually, you know, did very well and won some trophies. Yeah. So, so talk mm-hmm. about that, you know, from a youth development perspective. Yeah. So when I, when I signed with Red Bull, I think it was their first year in Red Bull Arena. And yeah, so 2010, I think I signed, I think I signed that probably earlier 2009, but 2010 was when they moved into the arena and they had Juan and Juan Agadello and Connor Laid were the two guys. And so like going into the training facilities and all that stuff, like you're seeing, you know, guys wearing the Red Bull tops, uh, training at the Jets for, uh, a football facility or training at um, Montclair State when you see the the first team around sometimes. So it's like, oh my God, like you're thinking, oh wow, like this is like really what it is. Like this is what it's like to be a pro. Mm-hmm. But then as the t- as time went on, you got to see the difference. Uh, I'll say honestly, when Andy, when Andy Roxburgh left, who was the, the uh, general manager at the time to when we got Ali, Ali Curtis, you saw a huge shift in the fact of like, they weren't just signing homegrown guys just to say, yeah, we got homegrown guys that we're signing. But mm-hmm. the intent was actually like, yo, we're going to play young guys. The way we're going is younger and all that stuff. So I think that built up a lot of buzz in the academy that made a lot of the guys actually, you know, really want to consider signing a homegrown deal. We had, you know, you, you have, you get those homegrown guys who probably do their, their three, their two, their three years, and then they're out the league. But, um, I think it wasn't until Ali and Jesse got there when they were really like, yo, like, let's let's set, actually set these guys up. They, they set a whole plan up from the playing style, the philosophy being the same throughout the academy to Red Bull 2 um, to the first team. And I think that really helped a lot of guys. And if you look at it, I mean, Red Bull produced a lot of a lot of guys who are now going to other teams and and performing and going overseas and performing. So uh, I think uh, that for me was big. I don't think I would be um set up the way I am uh in in facts of you know the knowing the differences on and how to how to act as a young guy the the maturity things and stuff like that and competitive nature I was very competitive but when you're in practices with with 15 other guys who are trying to get a a spot in the first team you know it, it definitely does get very competitive so I'm very thankful for Red Bull for that opportunity but yeah it was it, it was I don't want to sound cocky because like it was, at times it was tough being there, but for the most part, you know, I felt like I did what I could to stand out. And I always felt it from the moment I signed to the, to from the moment I signed the Academy to the moment I signed my home grown deal that I was going to be a pro for Red Bull. I don't think there was any doubt in my mind. No, most definitely. And they definitely set you up for success just because of the way they, you know, they create that pipeline. Like you said, when it came to, mm-hmm. you know, you know, signing for the Academy, then, you know, going to Red Bulls 2, winning a trophy there, and then, you know, ultimately to the first team. Who were some of your inspirations, you know, growing up, you know, as a soccer player? I know you mentioned your dad. You mentioned Yeah, Carly, my you know, dad. Mark. My dad was a was a huge inspiration. Um, Ronaldinho was big for me because uh, I just thought he was, at that time, just unbelievable, unplayable. Um Freddie Adu was and Josie were MLS wise were big for me because that's seeing, you know, black black uh, black guys out there, you know, being able to play at a high, on a high clip and 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 shine, and then probably uh, Terry Henry because he was at Arsenal, but he was he had the the swagger and confidence that you see, you know, from the how guys are in the NBA and guys are in the NFL, but he brought it to the Premier League, and for for him to be on that scale and being able to be himself and still, and still shine and flourish, not have any, you don't really hear anything bad um, about him in the press and stuff like that. Um, Getting in trouble wise. I think that was big. And 
you know, part of the reason why I'm an Arsenal fan. But yeah, those guys were all big for me because it's just, you know, you don't really get to see a lot of like that uh, black representation. Um, so I think that was huge for me to see those, those guys uh, prevail and, and do well. No, that's where what it's all at? about. My bad. Were you at Were you at Red Bull when Terry was there? Yeah, I was. Did you ever yeah. get a chance to like interact with them or train with them or anything? Yeah, I, 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 I trained with them a couple um a couple of times. Um, he actually intimidated me like so much. <laughs> like until like I think it was like two practices in a row. I, they called me. I said, "Yeah, I have schoolwork. I can't really come in." But that was because I knew <laughs> Thierry was going to be there. And I was like, "I'm not really trying to get yelled at by him," but. Once uh, once I once I met him, you know, he was he was cool. Uh, he made me go in in the middle and boxes a lot because I was just a young guy there. But you know, that's one of the things that I felt like you know helped build a rapport. And then also being cool with with Lloyd and and Brad, I think helped as well. But yeah, I mean, when I when I see him, uh, saw him when he was a coach from Montreal, we had a good conversation afterwards. We had a good conversation in the bubble, and then um, yeah, when he came back to some Red Bull games, got to actually see like get to see the young kid that he used to, you know, um, give a hard time to, to now being a, you know, a young player in the league. I think uh, he definitely respected that and it's have a, a pretty good relationship with him. No, most Still, definitely. So. One thing that is true when it comes to Red Bulls is the intensity of your guys' practices. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Can you share? Because I was there and I was like, yo, mm-hmm. if you can make it, <laughs> if you can make it at a Red Bulls practice, at least during the time Ali Curtis and Jesse were at uh, in charge, uh, yeah. you can be successful. Talk about the competitive sheet that you guys do um, on a day to day, week to week basis, you know, to build that competitive nature and, you know, the tracking that you guys did. Yeah. So, Oh, uh, Jesse had this thing that like he didn't really he didn't really care what the teams were like he wanted to see who like the real winners were. So the only way you could track that was if you put a list up. And so for every t- so every time you win, like a uh, small sided your your name you get a point you get a certain amount of points and all that stuff. And then at the end of the year, whoever like whoever um, would be up there, you probably get like good perks like they'll give you like a gift card or something or the closest parking spot in the in the facility or you just get like extra extra perks and all that stuff so it got to the point where like sometimes practices were more competitive than games like guys are at at each other's necks like ripping ripping shirts like you you walk in you you were in there like the locker room was was like a close locker room guys are cool laughing joking going on but if you're on the losing team at the end of the day, you walking in there, you're sitting in the locker room like when the winners are all sitting there laughing, you sitting there pissed because at the like pissed. you you're actually killing yourself to try to win, and when it don't happen, you're yeah, it was it was bad. I, I'll say this though, I probably say Tyler Adams is probably the most competitive person I've ever played with in my life. No, real talk, and this I- kid. Like and this is like from a young age. Like this kid, this 2018 was yeah. He's 23 now, so 2018 what? That was four years ago. So he was eight, 18, 19. This kid's out there yelling, telling Brad the press, like talking to Brad like that, like talking like mad at Jesse about a call, yelling at him. But then yeah, go 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 left. Yeah yeah yeah, go. I got you. I got you getting stuck in hey man f off all this stuff like you would think this guy was a, a 10 15 year vet the way this guy was and then it just got everybody else going so you know you got the young guys who are just talking yeah we want to beat the older guys you got the older guys telling you yo chill out like it's still us like it was it was it was fun it was fun now looking back on it but during those times bro it was war like sometimes you you leave in there and you're like dax left Alex Mule, they used to uh, drive together to practice. They used to, to, go, to go together. And there was a t- couple of times after tournament day, Dax's team didn't win. This guy would just drive off. He left Alex Mule at the training facility. <laughs> like, that's how mad guys are getting. No, you're exactly right. And I, I, I got to experience it when I was training with you guys. And just to yeah. see the fact that – because now you, people talk and you're, like, you're trying to, you know, I guess constructive criticism and people crying and stuff like that. But it was the first time yeah. where – Everyone, young guys like you, Tyler, Mule, Aaron Long, cussing guys out, complaining about calls, and no one is like, oh, no, no it was like for yeah. real, for real. And I think 
Uh, we need that when it comes to if your coaches, if you're listening or players like that competitive nature. And definitely with that with that being said, what advice would you have for any young player, you know, coming through the ranks to really like set their mark? I think for me that I struggled with the most was trying to find the balance in being yourself, but also being a part of the group and, and doing what the group needs. So like, for instance, like I'm a guy who gets, who likes to get the ball one v one, take guys on, be creative and all that stuff. But a lot of times, you know, coaches, you know, they're yelling at you, you know, keep it simple on this aspect or something like that. So, but, and I feel that, you know, that's something I struggle with a, with, uh, a lot, just knowing when to pick the right moments, when you can be like, you know what, this, maybe this, maybe uh, I should cut the ball back and pass and we bring it back around. But you know what, I feel confident going one on one against this guy. Let me try to create a chance. And I, I think for me, that's the, one of the, the biggest problems that I see. I have like little cousins who play and a sister who plays and all that stuff. And, you know, a lot of people don't know how to be themselves, but be within the team. So I think my biggest takeaway was don't second guess yourself. Take go with your instincts because your instincts are what got you this far. But also just be willing to, like you said, take take the criticism. If it don't work out, know what's the consequences and all that stuff. But I think that's the and being coachable. I, I I've seen. I've gone to, I've been in other clubs now after, you know, seven years. And it's, unfortunately, it's not all like Red Bull. Sometimes the coaches don't like, you know, guys ripping other guys because, you know, it's just, and, and like at Red Bull was, you might get ripped. Someone might say this, it's never personal. It's about getting better on the field. But, you know, some guys take things personal. Some guys can't be told what to do. And, I think that's another one. Just be, being coachable and just being able to pick your moments when you can, you know, express yourself and be yourself. I think those are the biggest things that I would I would tell the young guys that, you know, if you, if you are yourself, be true to yourself and all that stuff and just be willing to be coached because at the end of the day, you your job is just to get better. No, that's great advice. And can you talk a little bit about your experience? Obviously, you started at Red Bulls. You know, you made your name, name for yourself. Then you went on loan uh, to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm came back and then you signed with Columbus, you know, as a, mm -hmm. as a young player, you know, you break in, um, but you need games, you need to, you know, blossom and yeah. show yourself, you know, show your talent, you know, you're great at the one we won and, you know, breaking up, not breaking up, you know, being a deciding factor in games. Talk about mm -hmm. that importance of, you know, finding a situation where you can blossom, but also settling into a new team. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, the the loan was tough because you know being from a team who's competing, yeah, <laughs> being from a team who's competing for for uh, you know titles, winning supporter shield the the year before, and trying to push to be one you know to be one of those guys who's on the first team for Red Bull to to lift the MLS Cup, and then to go to Cincinnati. I mean that was that was tough, but I mean I quickly learned that you know what at the end of the day, like that's it was an opportunity for me to get time to get playing time and all that stuff. Unfortunately, it didn't work out injuries and international break, but it was, it was, uh, I felt it was a necessary thing for me to, to be able to see that, you know, maybe if Red Bull is not the place that that's, you know, for me that, you know, I can go somewhere else and I can flourish and I can, and I can play. And then I got, I got a call from, uh, the general manager of, um, Columbus, like, a week before they were leaving for preseason. And he said, yo, we want, we want you to come in on trial and, and uh, you know, see how you are with the guys and see if, you know, you can fit. And within the – I would be – maybe maybe Columbus might not want me to say this, but I knew after the second day, I said, yeah, I, this team can win the MLS Cup and I can and I can play for this team easily. Like, that's just the confidence I had. I felt like I had a really good preseason. I think I scored, like, three goals in, in, in three games. So I'm like, all right, I'm one of the leading goal scorers out here. They got proved, and after a week, Kayla came up to me. Yo, I think you're a great fit for the team, and it's and it's uh, we just want to give you a, a, a deal. And I said, Yeah, perfect. That's fine with me. So uh, I think that the situation, uh, even though it was you know hard at the time, and I was upset at the time with uh, Cincinnati, but I think that just set me up to to be seen in a different light. You know, you, when you think about Red Bull, you think about you know the high press, the energy, and all that stuff, but you don't really get to 
sometimes, you know, there's players who, you know, not always just want to play forward one time. So I want to keep it sometimes and, and have some type of possession and stuff like that. So uh, I, th- I think I was able to get away from that when I was at Cincinnati. I was able to show a little bit more of my, my quality in the time that I had. And then uh, I think that set me up for Columbus. So I, I think that was a big turning point for me because I felt like that was the point I became, you know, not just a, a Red Bull homegrown, but an MLS uh, MLS player. And I think that changed in a lot of in a lot of eyes of, of teams around the league. No, that's really important. I, I love the fact that you talked about confidence mm-hmm. because young player, uh, young bright star within the league, but, you know, you still had the confidence to trust yourself and go on trial. And obviously, you know, mm-hmm. the way the season's going now, you, you can tell Columbus made a, a good bet on you. And, you know, I yeah. know Caleb personally, I know he loves the type of player you are and you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're rewarding him in more ways than I'm sure they imagined when you originally came on trial. So, you know, for the young guys listening, you know, don't be too, uh, I don't want to say too, too cocky to go on trial. If that, if you, if you have a situation for you, for yourself, that may work. Yeah. Out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think as a, as a young player, I mean, a lot of the time you're betting on yourself. So, I mean, if you're, if there's a if teams, obviously, you know, there's some situations where you might, you might, they're looking at you to just be a roster guy, but, you know, get it, get an understanding of, I also looked at the roster to see, okay, what's, what, what spots are available? What's, what's it look, uh, what are my chances looking like? And, you know, I weighed up the options and, you know, that felt what was, what was right for me. So I think, you know, having also having a good, support system as well having my dad you know someone to bounce things off so I think that's very important as well you know you're only as good as the company you keep so you know if you got people in there who are who believe in you and who are pushing pushing you and and all that I think that you know uh it's only gonna it's only gonna benefit you in the end rather than having people who are you know I could have my dad could have easily been like yo Red Bull let you go because of this that and the third it was not yo but yeah they let you go so what you gonna do about it like you going you gonna sit here and cry and 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 what go go back to school now or do you how bad do you want to be a pro this is this is what it is sometimes it don't work out for you so take the highs when it when they come but you know take the the lows on the chin and you know I think the the best thing about it for me I think is just the support I had and that's I think that's big for for a, a lot of people to have the right support system around you yeah most definitely most definitely. Talk about, you know, you mentioned, you know, you went on trial, you're like within three days, you're like, oh, yeah, this team has the potential to win MLS Cup. And then fast forward nine months later, you guys end up winning MLS Cup. So are yeah. you like a psychic or, you know, talk about this whole experience of, you know, hoisting that trophy? I think God has blessed me with great um, intuition. It's like now. <laughs> but when I, <laughs> when I walked, when I, when I got there, so I didn't even, like, I, I heard the rumors about Darlington, but I didn't know that it was, like, oh, no, set in stone that. that, yeah, like, he's there. Like, he, no, no, that he was at Columbus. Oh. But when I pulled up, he's one of the first people I saw. I said, oh, okay, this guy's already won two. So, I mean, wherever he goes, this guy just wins. So this is this is a spot to be at. <laughs> then also playing against Columbus, you know, you know how Jonah Mensa is. This guy's an animal. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. Then... What really made me think, yo, we're going to win, honestly, this is guy Lucas Delarion. He's like that? What he was doing in preseason, I was like, nah. No one's going to – no. You couldn't, like – it was embar- It was borderline embarrassing. Like, getting the ball, first touch out the air, popping it over someone's foot, cut, cut, neg the guy, switch with his left foot to the other side of the field to Pedro – Pedro Cross and G goal. I said, yep, yeah, yeah, this team got everything. Like strong defensively, got a got a guy that you can't take the ball off in Darlington. You got a proven goal scorer with G, good wingers, and then you got a, a 10 who can who can make up plays. I was like, yeah, they we 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 got this 100 mm-hmm. percent Went to the like then first game playing Seattle. And I think we should have beat Seattle, but you know, a crazy call. And then you know how Seattle gets when they get that 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 goal they out there they especially at home they taste blood mm-hmm. that last 20 minutes so end up tying that then we had the bubble like the the league shut down i'm sitting there thinking dag this was a year like mm-hmm. guys could have won and then we get to the bubble and it was just like everything just clicked like for all of us like 
I don't know if it, if it was like, you know, we just bought into the fact that, I mean, we're here, we might as well do it or, or what. But those, those group games, when they said that the points were on the line, the way the team played was crazy. And at that point, that's when, like, I think the whole team believed, like, oh, yeah, we, we were, as long as we stay, as long as we get home games, we're icing anybody. Mm-hmm. And then once we got that to decision day and we needed a win to get that home field advantage and we got it, I didn't think there. I honestly believe, I was like, yeah, there's no way we're not winning. Called my dad, I'm like, yo, December 12th, make sure you're here for the flight. Like, <laughs> we, we, in the, we in the final. Call and me. God willing, it worked. <laughs> Respect. No, you, you mentioned your dad a lot, and you know him being an inspiration and support system. You talked about international breaks during the time with Cincinnati. Obviously, you're mm-hmm. a Haitian international, uh, but you were born in the U.S. You know, you've been scouted at a young age for the U.S. What was that decision mm-hmm. process like, and how much did your dad, you know, sway you to come home to the motherland? <laughs> Honestly, he didn't really have to. To say much, uh, I was do- I did like U14 camps, I did a U15 camp, and then we got to like 17. That just wasn't getting called in, so I was like, all right. And then he hit up um, the, the the national team coach because they were like sending emails to my dad about you know maybe tr- coming in for the 15s and all that stuff. So it got to a point where I just had to, you know how well Red Bull the academy they had like a real close like. Um, like connection with the national team, mm-hmm. you know, with many shell shite always being there and stuff like that. So, um, I asked, um OG in the game. Yeah, if you don't yeah. know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. So like, I asked him, I was like, Hey, like, is there any way you can just, you know, ask the, the, um, the coach, like, is there any chance of me being looked at for residency? If not, I, there's no hard feelings. It's all good. But I just want to know. Cause I was like, I didn't want to make a rash decision, a decision. And then, they are, they're talking about, yeah, we want to bring you in the camp. And the coach was like, no, we probably – we pretty much got it got it set for uh, who we are. And I was like, okay, cool, great. I hit up my dad. I said, yeah, they said that there's nothing there. So, yeah, I have no problem. I have no problem going. And he's like, okay. So he's like, yeah, just go see what it's like, if you know um, how you feel about it. I went there for like two weeks. The guys were cool. Um, my At that time, my French was terrible. Creole was terrible, but <laughs> – Guys really like at first, you know, they they were like, oh, they they call they call uh, guys from who are not from Haiti Jasper. <laughs> so they're like, ah. So I, at first they're just calling me Jasper, Jasper. And then we played a game and I scored. And then right after that, they yeah, Derek, good job, man. So like that's when I knew I'm like, okay, cool, all right, we good. So I called my dad. I was like, yo, man, yeah, I I don't see myself going back to U.S. Honestly, like they didn't they didn't they didn't bet on me when I was when I was when uh when I was down. Haiti did. So at that at that time, there was no reason for me to look back to go back to U.S. No, nah, most respect, man. It's, it's always interesting because, you know, with dual internationals and first generation mm-hmm. um, immigrants and stuff like that, you see a lot of people use it as bait. Like, oh, well, if you guys don't pick me, I'm going to go here. And you're like, all right, you guys don't want me? No problem. Go to my motherland yeah. and, you know, blossom there. So excited to see you guys continue to develop and continue to uh, grow because, I mean, you guys have a lot of talent. And if you look at some yeah. of Josie's, you know, obviously he's playing for the United States. Jonathan David, you know, he's mm-hmm. has Haitian descent. He's playing for Canada. But There's the ones that are playing for Haiti, there. yeah, you guys, are, you guys are killing mm-hmm. it. So moving forward, what do you guys think it takes to make it to the next level, like to make that jump, you know, to be one of the leaders in CONCACAF? See, that's a difficult one because – Are you out there recruiting? 20 20- – Oh yeah, I'm definitely out here recruiting. I, I know a couple of Haitians out here that I'm like, yo, man, like, what's going on? I'm not gonna say their names. I don't want to put them on the spot, mess up their call ups and nothing like that. But there's a there's a few guys out there that I'm trying to get, you know, to get to 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 switch over because I like you said, I think we have a very a very uh, talented group, and I think you saw it in the Gold Cup, but not this last one, but the one before when we made it to the semis. And I think that at that point, that was like. I think that was a turning point for us. I think that's when like a lot of guys realized, yo, we can we can bang with the top teams in Concacaf. But I think that what the thing is is you just need like, uh, which is I'm think interesting to see with the coach now. I think we just needed a better coach who, you know, who understood, you know, all the aspects because I felt like the coach before he didn't really like guys who weren't playing in France. Mm-hmm. Or if you weren't playing in Europe, he really didn't like. Really, he didn't reach you. He didn't really respect you. But 
you're doing your thing in MLS or you're doing your thing in, in Canada or, or Mexico or, or any of those other places or in the Haitian league. And it's kind of like, Oh, I got to call you in, but I really don't, don't want no, no parts of you. And I think that really caused a riff when it came down for nations league and all that stuff and, and, the, and decisions and how guys decided not to, not to go to call ups and things like that. So I think we get broke away from that. And then I just think, I don't I really wanted to see what we would have been like the last gold cup, because I think that we had a really good group, very, very dynamic attacking wise and solid defensively, but COVID really, really, t- I think COVID took out 12, play- 12 out of our 23 players when the tournament started. So it was, it was tough on, from, from that aspect, but yeah, I just think, you know, if we just get on the, the same page and, 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 and be a team that I feel we give a lot of respect to a lot of, a lot of teams, which is, which is, which is fair when you got like a Mexico or a U.S. and or Panama. But I think that we, Haitian people are very prideful. And I think that we need to use that to our advantage because at the end of the day, there are teams in CONCACAF who are, who are scared of us, who are scared mm-hmm. of the fact that, you know, we're very, extremely athletic, but we know we have guys who can, who can make plays, discipline guys who, who, who can run, who have engines and all that stuff. And I think if we just use that and all our, and all the, the good qualities that we have to our advantage, I think that will put ourselves in a, in a good spot. I think we usually shoot ourselves in the foot when we try to be, you know, a team that can absorb pressure and all that stuff instead of going out, pressing teams and, you know, putting teams under the gun instead of trying to, to be a team that sits in counter. So I think once we get out of that and, and guys are, are confident again and, and, and playing, I think that, you know, you know, Haiti will be back up there competing for our Gold Cups and things like that. Most definitely. I'm excited to see it. I think, you know, with the right uh, with the right change, um, Haiti, mm-hmm. Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. teams like from the Car- Caribbean, you guys tap into the diaspora as well. It's game over yeah. for a lot of folks. Exactly. But, yeah. Uh, talk about it from the standpoint of, you know, being a representative of Haiti, an ambassador, you know, with everything that's gone on historically over the recent years. Um, does that, you know, talk about the pride that it brings you you know, as a soccer player and, you know, countryman. Oh, it's, it's the, the, the biggest honor. My, my grandfather came to, to America with like $19 in his pocket. Didn't speak any English. Was the youngest out of all the, out of the kids, but he was, he was the man. He, he came here, he made a living for himself. And one of the most proud, the proudest things uh, for me was when I told my grandfather, he got choked up and he like teared up. And that's like one of the, the very few times that my, my grandfather was able to show, you know, that type of um, emotion and be that, that um, transparent with me. Usually, you know, he's just a, you know, tough guy, Caribbean, you know, um, stern, all that stuff. But yeah, he did that. And then after, I think I just, I just saw him for his birthday and like, he just told me how proud he was for me. That's, that's bigger than anything uh, that my, that I'm able to make my grandfather proud, make my family proud. But yeah, I take it, I take it extremely, you know, serious when I, when I put on those colors, because I've, I've been in Haiti after we've won and you can see how, how much joy just brings people that, you know, they, they go through so much on a daily basis. It's just so sad to see. And that's, you know, when you go back in the history about, you know, what they've actually done being the first, you know, first, the first black people to, to be, be out of slavery and then to see what France, you know, did to them, taking all the money and all that stuff. Like it, or then you got the earthquakes, the assassination of the president. It's just, it's just always seems like, you know, Haiti's going through something. But when that national, when the national team is playing, it's, it's bliss. It's, it's nothing but love. And that's, I, I take that that serious a lot as, as well as a lot of the other guys because we understand that you know for 90 minutes the country's happy if, we, if, if we're winning and if we're and if we win it's a party in the into the night and i i kind of i always like you know i get choked up just listening to the national anthem because i understand how like the pride that people that the pride you know I, like i said patients are proud but the pride that they have when their national team is playing no matter who it is um, it's just something that's that's remarkable to me, and it's to see the the fight and the resilience that the people have, you know, to to go through day day by day, go through all that struggle and stuff, 
it's only right that we are that we able to bring a little bit, at least half of that fight, put that on the field, and and just make them happy. So I mean, I can't even put into words how how much it means to me to be able to represent the national team. That's the power of soccer, man. And uh, I know uh, L was doing some research, and you 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 started a foundation, the Etienne Family Foundation. Uh, do you mind sharing yes, some I words did. about that and some initiatives you have in the works? Yeah, so um, I started a foundation when I first when I first signed uh, in 2016, and at first my goal was to you know just you know help the the community around me. Just you know in Patterson, you know there's a a lot of homeless people. So I got every, I didn't do it last year, but every year I do a coat drive um, for at Thanksgiving. That way, you know, people can you know, have some, some clothing, some warm clothing and things like that going into the the harsh winter months in, in uh, New Jersey. But then um, I think I got, I, it hit my, I think my dad said something like, yo, so what about, you know, we want to do something for Haiti. And I thought about that. So um partner with my church my church uh started a school out um like a little funding the school out there so whenever i can i'll get um notebooks uh paper you know stuff school supplies and then also being able to a good thing about having you know good teammates you know they're always willing to help uh, old boots they'll give old boots and i'll send that out there to haiti and all that stuff but um what i have now is i'm doing a i'm trying to do a mini pitch in patterson Mm, and okay. I, yeah so i feel like that's and there's like a little where my grandmother lives down the street they have this thing east side park and they have this little rink there that i used to play soccer there all the time and you know cut up my knees playing on the the the, the, the gravel because it it was a rink but it was, they had the basketball hoops there but mm. su- saturday sundays you know they all at the gym you got all the you got uh, all the caribbeans and you know, the Dominicans, Puerto Ricans out there playing soccer in that in that little spot. So I feel like, you know, if I could be able to do something and be able to bring a mini pitch there, I mean that'll be that'll be the biggest the biggest uh achievement in in my career. I mean, winning trophies and all that stuff, you know, that's the job and you wanna do that, but to impact my, my city in a positive way, I mean that that means the world to me and that's something I can even dream of of doing when I first when I first started the foundation. So Hopefully I can, you know, get that, get that going and, and get that up there. And, uh, hopefully, you know, it just makes, helps kids, you know, who want to join soccer and and get into it more. And then, you know, just keep them safe because, you know, I, I'm no, no big tough guy, but yeah, like it's, it is hard out there. And I feel like, you know, sports will always help, you know, keep kids out of trouble. Most definitely. I'm definitely going to tap in with you offline about some of the stuff that you're doing that pertains to Haiti. But it seems like you have a good head on your shoulders. Matter of fact, it doesn't seem we we know. Um, last week Thank we had Taylor on the that. show. Um, and you know her from MLS player engagement. It seems like you've mm-hmm. already thought ahead about, you know, soccer's not going to be forever. But, I mean, it's crazy to think you're already seven years in the league and you're only 25? Yeah. 25, yeah. Crazy. So, you know, God willing, you got another seven plus years. But have you already started mm-hmm. to think about, you know, next after? Um, Honestly, I didn't start really until probably this off season uh, or the last off season. Just seeing, you know, uh, because I don't really like I don't know what I want. to. T- Sometimes I feel like I can be a coach, but then I'd be thinking, nah, like I don't have the patience to. <laughs> be, I like I'll do like a That's little camp too. or something. Yeah. I'll go to a camp and I'm like, nah, this this is not for me. But then maybe being agent, I don't know. I, I talk to my dad about it all the time, but like, I don't know. It's just there's just so many things that I feel that at certain times that I want to tap into that, like like even like a podcast, something like this, like that that intrigues me because I like talking and this mm-hmm. is like you know have someone on, on the on the show chop it up and all that stuff. But yeah, I don't really, I honestly like had to start really thinking about it. Cause I really, I realized I'm like, Oh snap, I'm turning, I'm 25 now. Like I was just 18. It, I can be 30 in a, in a, in a mm-hmm. second. And you know, not everyone is blessed like Ronaldo, LeBron and them to be playing until 30, Bradley playing until 37 and all that stuff. So like, I got to start thinking about what's going on afterwards. So hopefully, you know, this year will help me, you know, level, um, level up in terms of, you know, figuring out what I really want to do 
and get close to, to something. But right now I just have like, I feel like I have my hand in like a lot of, a lot of pots and stuff like that. Nah, respect. Well, you know, after seeing your Instagram, you know, if you ever have a, have it, have a itch for the media space, you know, we got some space for you over at Two Cents FC. Yeah, but tap in man, with us, I, sure. I, I, I'll definitely tap in for sure. With that being said, let's get into the fun stuff, you know, because like I said, your IG, I, I, I know, I know some people that know you, and you know, you. <laughs> so let's get into the fun yeah. stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I know people that know you, so let's get into the fun stuff, L. All right, so a couple of rapid fire questions. So, what are some interesting facts about yourself that most people don't know? Um, they probably don't know my father's a pastor. Um, they probably don't know. Let me see. Yeah, I probably people who probably don't know that I played basketball. I was actually kind of nice at basketball. I was like little Rondo out there. I was getting crazy <laughs> rebounds, but okay. Yeah, little Rondo. Out there. I, mean, right. I said they saying when you use like Rondo as an expression, that means you got some game to you. Yes, but when this guy dunked on me, I said, "Yeah, this ain't for me, bro." Like that's he was that was a, but that was the most time, the most I've ever felt violated before in my life. This guy just gathered up and dunked on me, like knees to my face and all that. I was like, I walked out the practice. I was like, I'm done. I'm not I'm good on that. <laughs> Let's see what else. I don't know. I feel like I'm a kind of like an open book. I'm not, uh, people don't really know, but I'm like my first like interaction with people. I'm very shy, like extremely shy. Like I won't say nothing. I'll I'll just observe and stuff which is probably hard to believe because a lot of people know me as like loud, talkative and all that stuff. So I think that's the, I think that's the biggest one that I'm actually like low key kind of shy at times. Okay. Okay. I feel you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm similar. Oh, similar here's way, so. one. I used to sing in my church choir. I had a couple of, uh, solos in the church choir. Some I, solos, huh? You got the yo, vocals. Okay. Huh? okay what's your go-to got, karaoke yeah. song then? With you, um, with you, Chris Brown. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you do got some vocals on him. Yeah, All I got right. little vocals on me. You point out to the crowd to a girl. Yo, it's just me and you, baby. What you saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For real. All right. So, so staying in that vein, though, what's on your pre-match playlist? Um, glow up by Nav. Um. Hmm. You know what? Ox, let me see. Are you on the ox in the locker room? Are you on the ox? Yeah, I'm on the ox. I'm on the ox. I got. I got to be on the ox. Privileges? Come on, man. Okay, yeah, just yeah. making sure. Nah, I'm on the I'm on the ox because the 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 kit men be wild and be playing some crazy songs like like Lady Gaga and stuff before the games. Like, bro, I can't. But the last game, I was I actually was getting treatment first, but I came back in and uh, a Selena Gomez song was on, and I was like, Yo, we're trying to we're not going shopping for training bars, bro. Like, we got to go here and try to smack these guys. What are y'all doing? But I got that. Uh, banking on me, gonna. I play a lot of Young Thug. Young Thug, I got Young Thug songs. Ric Flair drip. That's a that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> what a life by Big Sean. Headshot, Lil T J. Yeah. And Cold Shoulder by Central C. So, okay, uh, like a couple okay. of different places, you know. All right. So this next one might be a little controversial, but who's the best dressed player on your team? Best dressed. Yeah. I would the probably most the most drip, I would probably have to say is Steven Moreira uh, from France. Okay. Yeah, he got that. He got that French drip for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Steven Moreira. Yeah. All right, bet, bet. All right, so you um you recently scored and you hit the gritty on him. So I mm-hmm. saw that. So who has thank the you, best goal you. celebrations on the team? Me. I think it's <laughs> like everyone has their thing, you know. Pedro sometimes he'll do the knee slide. G will will point to actually, you know, I take that back. Giassi, I'll praise to the Most High. So his his one to the yeah, I'll say that's the best one, and then I would say me because I'll just mix it up. I might go out there hit the folks. Whoa, I don't know. Sometimes it is how I feel in the moment. Sometimes yeah. so but I'll go. I'll Giassi. give you credit. I, I like the the tribute to uh, BWP. The last oh one. yeah, that was yeah, great. yeah. Because I was talking to him, I'm like, "Yo," because uh, I knew like me and him are real close. You know, me and him are real close. So like when I when I when I when he finally let me know that he was retiring, I'm like, "Hi, right, bro. Well, like next game, like, once you make it official, the next game I got you." But man, hit uh, hill clicks, and ah, yeah, I had a 
I'll tell you off offline what he said to me. Okay. But he's like, he said, you should probably do it the, the next game. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll just do it, you know, before someone else tried to hop on and bite or something like yeah. that. He's like, all right. So we go, and the first, I, sc- I scored in the first half, but I completely forgot about it. So I was about to gritty. And then I realized uh, that the flag was up. But I was like, oh, snap, I'm supposed to be doing hill clicks today. Mm. So then I, when I scored, I was about to gritty again. I was so excited about the gritty again. But I'm like, I told Brad I was going to do hill clicks. I did the hill clicks. But what I didn't know was it was his birthday. So that that was even like, to me, that even made, made it even like more, more lit that, yeah, yeah I'm, his, I'm the first person to do the hill clicks for, for Brad in his retirement and it's on his birthday. Hey, nah, that's, that's, a, that's a salute for my boy right there. Respect. That's God working right there. Yeah, sure, but real quick, sure. the gritty. Let's rate it. All right, one to ten. Rate Polisic's gritty, and then one to ten. Rate yours. We could be honest. This is honesty hour on uh, on two. Honesty, <laughs> I, I'll give him a two, maybe because like he went, he he, he hit here with it, uh-huh. and he had a little bit of swag here, but it was just, it was not. It was, it looked, it looked weird. Yeah, honestly, I'll say my gritty is probably like a five. I didn't. That wasn't even my best version of the gritty. I was just fans. The fans for for Columbus were tweeting at me. All year last year, you ain't scoring no goals, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Off season, they talking about how they need to get new wingers. Yeah, Derek, should Derek even be on the team? So oh, you kept the I receipts, was more, huh? Yeah, so I was more upset about the fact that y'all really going – y'all forgot that – y'all forgot about who scored in the MLS Cup final bet. Okay, all right, let me get my chance. <laughs> and I scored, so I was just more excited about the fact that, yeah, we're going to see all the – I still got the receipts. I got the screenshots in my phone, so – I want to see who which one of y'all tweeting at me. Good game today, Derek. So that's what I was thinking about. So my gritty wasn't even good like that. So the next the next goal, you're going to see the real gritty. Because the real gritty, I'll say, is an eight. Okay, I respect I that. Okay. I, lo- I, love that. I love that. I love that energy, too. I love that energy. Yes. It's I love that energy. Because a yeah, lot of times, yeah. people will be talking spicy, and then they get in front crazy. of you. Like, ah, Twitter, you the Twitter, the Twitter fingers are crazy. Twitter fingers are crazy. I can't stand it. I used to have. I used to be just like, sitting there liking it, liking it, liking it, and then whenever they say, "Oh, good game," wasn't this you? <laughs> that's that's, 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 that's that jersey in you, huh? Swiftly. Yeah, like that's the one thing I hate. Like, all right, y'all want to y'all want to say, "Oh, he didn't have a good game," but then you want like, "Oh, this guy sucks. He should be cut." How would you feel if people came to your workplace and when you messed up, yo, fire him? <laughs> it's fire that Asian fry you'd coming be, out. Yeah, like, <laughs> you'd be sick, yo. <laughs> you'd be sick. So, like, I understand. You type okay, in on Twitter. You type in, like, hey, you're not typing yeah, fast enough. You're out of here. Exactly, yeah. Wait, you said you you said you do, what, 50, 50 words a minute? This is looking like 35 to me, buddy. It's time to go. Pack your bags. <laughs> like, nah. You'd be, you'd be sick. If you mess up at work, yo, imagine having to do that. Every day, someone's got a, a camera on you, just waiting for you to mess up, bro. What? These fans—they don't even understand it. I don't like the Rashford thing. I saw the Rashford thing the other day. Mm-hmm. Y'all, are, y'all are not even talking about footy no more. Y'all, y'all getting disrespectful and and being about ra- racism and stuff. But y'all want to get mad because he 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 might have given you the finger or something like. That's less than what y'all are saying to him on a daily basis. But y'all mm-hmm. mad and people start to react. That's what I don't understand. That's that's the one thing I would really love to see. Have some soccer player just go up into a business and just yeah, hold just yell hey, hey, and hey, this, this is hey, you say you like media. This is the content we can make. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can talk off one about that. this. <laughs> yeah, we could definitely do that. Go into a random uh, a random business and be like, okay, so what we're gonna do here is when you make a mistake, we gonna tweet at you, we gonna DM you, we gonna text your phone. And we gonna yell at you right in front of your face and say some disrespectful stuff, and you can't say nothing back, or you'll get in trouble. I guarantee you, everybody's opinions would change on how athletes react to to people, because y'all know they be saying some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. The fans, like I hate playing Philly. I hate playing <laughs> Philly for a team that ain't won nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you know, I, you know, I'm Philly through and through. That was my I first don't want to hear it. <laughs> want to hear it Philly the fans out there are cr- they're crazy they're crazy no nah, yeah I got some good stories about you know Philly banter but uh yeah that's funny uh, <laughs> yeah we're gonna touch on that rash for thing a little later too um <laughs> so what's your favorite off pitch activity like what you like to do in your days off honestly I got really into cooking like the quarantine right. really made me like I was spending way too much money on the fact that places are closed I got a 
get some some guy to drive 45 minutes to bring my food and i'm paying 50 dollars for a cheeseburger and some fries that end up being cold by the time they get to me so i i got into cooking really real big so i think right now cooking is my little my, my little hobby my little forte right now okay. okay what's your what's your best dish what's my best it? dish um is some haitian rice salmon and cream spinach that's what I'll, that's my go-to. Okay. You got the I'll Haitian small chops. Meal. Yeah, exactly. Or I might make some lamb chops. My lamb chops are fuego. Lamb chops and some fries, maybe. I mean, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm well versed in all, in all aspects. I can make some Italian, go, you know, some pasta. I make a little bit of sushi. I mean, I've been trying it all. Make a sushi? Okay. Oh, nice yeah. way, huh? You nice way. I can't, I can't, I can't use chopsticks, but I can make a little bit of sushi though. Respect. Crazy. Uh, okay. Appreciate it. I got I got some ideas. All right. What's your favorite away city? To play it? To play at? To the whole play, experience. Visit. <laughs> he he asking where to play at. I'm asking the whole experience. <laughs> the whole experience. The best city. Pre COVID. Pre COVID? <laughs> ah, Atlanta. Mm, that's Atlanta. I'll say yeah, I'll say Atlanta. Oh. All right. If you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the wings be fire. See, you're not gonna you know find it. You're not gonna get these answers <laughs> on anywhere other than two cents FC. We're giving you the real. No. Shout, shout out to Derek, man. Respect. Uh, uh, yeah. Off top. All right. What's on? Who's on your Haitian five aside? Haitian five aside. Is that including a goalkeeper or without? However you want to do yeah. it. I'll go. I'll go. No goalkeeper. I'll do Ricardo Ade. Brian Alcius, Duckins Nazon, myself, and Franzi Peril. I think that's a good five side. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to stay on that. We're going to stay in that vein. Since we were talking about Jersey earlier, who's on your Jersey five side? My Jersey five five side. Not Turner from Jersey, right? Phoebe is my pickups all the time. I don't know if he's really from Jersey though. I think he's from Jersey. Yeah. So Matt Turner is goal. Yeah. Uh Juan. I can name Legends as well. Yeah. Like, how are you okay. I bet. Um, so Matt, Tav, Claudia, myself, and Juan. That's that's pretty that's pretty decent. Okay. <laughs> no no defense, just attack. Just attack. All vibes. But you got yeah. you got Matt back there. Just yeah, Matt exactly. All that's right. Funny. And last one. Um, what's your favorite brunch spot in NY? And when we think about brunch, we're not talking about Denny's. We're not talking about food. <laughs> I was not even thought in my mind. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bagatelle. Okay. Crazy. Bagatelle. That place is heaven on earth. Nothing else okay. I need to say about it. Heaven on earth. Bagatelle. Man, I respect there. Can you answer these questions? No, no politician type <laughs> qu- answers. Give it no. to us, real I'm the, man. Respect. I'm the people. Sh- I'm the people's champ. I'm the people's champ. <laughs> I told I told you I know some people that know you man. <laughs> we go we gonna talk about it. we gonna see. You gonna okay. see. We gonna see. All, All right, right, what we got, oh. All right, so let's jump into one of our favorite games on the show, um, trending topics. So this is a game where I'll read off some trending topics or you know, some news headlines. Um it could be about soccer, it could be about pop culture, however, but um our guest Derek and Amobi will rate these headlines or give their opinions on these headlines using the soccer card system. So okay. no card is I agree or I'm cool with it. Yellow card is I'm indifferent. I can go either way on it. Mm-hmm. And red card is I disagree or, you know, I'm not cool with it. And then they'll give like a short explanation of why they gave that card. Okay. So okay. we got three All this right. week. Um, let's jump right into it. First one, PSG booths Neymar and Messi in their most recent um, UCL match. So what card are we giving PSG fans for their behavior? Red card. 
That's 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 when you don't agree, right? Red card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red card. You don't boo Messi. What, what is wrong with you? You, you, what is what does Messi have to do with the fact that you gave up three goals? You guys are winning three one. Like that's Messi's fault. Messi don't Messi de- Messi never defended. Why y'all expecting him to come here and defend now? That's and then Neymar. That I mean that that guy like. He just makes the game so beautiful to watch. Like, I don't understand why you're mad at attacking guys when you had a when you had a lead. Yeah. Are y'all booing? Are y'all booing? Um, Kimbepe? Are y'all booing? Um, Hakimi? Are you booing? Yeah. Are you booing any of those guys? No. You're mad at the guys who didn't score, but you're not mad about the guys who gave up the goal. So I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna give it a red card because you just can't boo greatness. That's. <laughs> that's like fans go. That's like the Lakers booing LeBron. You can't do that. Yeah, for me, okay. it's a red card for the simple fact that you're booing him and you're wearing his jersey. You know, like it doesn't really make <laughs> sense. Stupid. Yeah. So, and the fact like it's a team sport. Obviously, everyone defends, everyone attacks, but you didn't bring on Messi and Neymar to be tracking back seventy yards and then going over to score. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So. And PSG like says they're like one of the smartest fan bases, but for them to boo, you know, you gotta take your take your frustrations oh. elsewhere. Yeah, if you're mad about them giving up goals, you should have had them. T- you, the coach should have took them off the field. But at the end of the day, PSG, this is in your DNA. And then you sign the Tottenham manager. That's in their DNA. So y'all should be booing him. Not the, what are you doing? With the, nah, nah, red card. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, next one. Um, so as we talked about it a little earlier, Rashford um, has some words with a fan or with some fans recently um, during his recent performance. And he was also dropped from the England squad. So what card are we giving Southgate for dropping Rashford during this time when his confidence is low? I'm going to go with no card. And I understand. I mean, we have to. Has England qualified for the World Cup yet? Yeah, I think not sure. I'm gonna check that. So I'm not sure if they did, but at the if you if you're trying to qualify for the World Cup or you're looking at your team for the World Cup, right? If you're being honest, Rashford really might not be on the on the list just based of performance. I mean, it's been tough. I think it's been tough for him ever since. The Euros, I think things have went downhill since then. But I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's his his job personally to have to take into consideration the feelings of a player uh, who might not even be on the squad for the World Cup. So I'm gonna go with no card because I'm, I'll say I'm, I'm indifferent on it. Actually, actually, wait, no card is agree. I'm, yeah. I'm messing it up. Okay, never mind. I want to say yellow card. I'm indifferent on it. Okay. I'm a different yellow card. I'll go yellow card, yeah. Because I can respect. see why you want to bring him in for confidence. I feel like if you qualify for the World Cup, then maybe it's okay to bring him in, let him get some confidence. You know, maybe playing against a smaller team, get a goal, see the ball hit the back of the net. But then if you're not, I mean, Sancho wasn't put on the list either, and he's been playing over Rashford. So we're not even talking about that. And Grealish, Grealish, don't even get me started. <laughs> Yeah, there's deep ties for that grill issue, but uh, for yeah. me, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going yellow card. Um, obviously, performance equals tolerance, and right now, Rashford is not performing. But you know, for Southgate, you want to get as much talent to be playing at a high level, so you have the hard decisions when World Cup comes around. And Rashford, obviously, he has a place within the national team, but you know, maybe being with the guys, you know, he's not saying like you have to start him, but just being in that environment. You know, practicing and just being with that group can help him when he goes back to Man U. Um, but I'm not a coach. I'm never going to be a coach. So I don't have to make those tough decisions. But for me, it's a yellow card, especially with what he's going through after, you know, Euros and this. So, um, yeah, I'm going yellow card. Yeah. All right. And last one. Chelsea has to take a 10 hour bus ride uh, to their FA Cup match. Um, due to the regulations and sanctions that you know are, are imposed on them, 
So what card are we giving this situation? We're dealing with, we're dealing with Arsenal, our two Arsenal guys on the, on the show right now. I don't care what's going on with Chelsea, man. They can, they can do, I don't, honestly, I mean, yeah, I, I'm indifferent on it. I really don't. I, as a player, I get, yeah, but as an Arsenal fan, I don't care what's going on with Chelsea. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I think it's yellow card. I'm, a, I'm indifferent yeah. on the situation. I feel because you know that's that's tough. Like, but then also I feel like you got guys on that team making billies. They can easily get a PJ. Just put your bread together. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. teach his own. Hop on the train or something. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. So I I feel that from that aspect of the travel, but I could care less what happens to Chelsea. Yeah, so I'm the only Chelsea fan in this group. So I'm saying, I'll say yellow card just because, like, you know, you guys haven't made. So it's gonna, if it's going to be a bus, it's going to be a luxury bus. So it's like you probably shower. Double stuff decker there. bus <laughs> where you can sleep on the top of it and all yeah. that stuff. Like, it's going to be fine. They, they'll they be straight. Yeah, so I'm not too worried. Just get the result, obviously, with everything else going on within the team and uh, world of, world affairs. There's more things to complain about. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna give you a yellow card. Yeah. Okay. So, but real yeah, quick, I know we're about to be gone. Oh, um, I forgot to ask this rapid fire question because I know, I know people that know you, Derek. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Fa- favorite favorite off season spot? Miami, LA. Where you where you where are you going for off season when you you know relax? Put Miami. Your feet up. <laughs> Miami. Miami. I All love right. Miami. Miami is a spot, yo. Okay. Love Miami. <laughs> All right. What we got? Anything? Any closing thoughts, L? Or you want me nah, to take it, bro? Yo, Derek. Derek. Yo, really appreciate you coming on, man. It's a pleasure. You know, from when the first when I first met you to now and seeing everything that you you know d- done in your career, it's amazing to see. Um, but for the people that want to tap in with you and support you or banter with you, how can they how can they get in touch with you? Or support you. Oh, uh, you you can follow me on Instagram dtn10. You can follow me on Twitter dtn underscore ten. I'm always about the banter. So just so you know, like if y'all gonna follow me, I don't need y'all really being on my page talking about oh this that and the third. Like if you're down for bants, I'm the guy to follow. If you're gonna be serious all the time, I'm not the guy to follow because you'll probably try to treat at me. And yeah, I'm really interactive on Twitter. Like so, you know what? You guys want to want to chat on Twitter? You know, hit me up. But if y'all gonna be serious, please just don't even waste your time. That's all I ask. <laughs> Respect. And obviously, you got number ten in your in your bio. Are you ever gonna you gonna get the number ten? You gonna have to you know pay somebody for it? What's, what's, you, gotta, what's, you gotta pay Lucas uh, for that. I, I I I I'm never gonna <laughs> touch that tennis. Lucas Lucas is there. Maybe for a national team, I might keep it. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. Ten is just you know just a great number. I just, How much you would would you, you be know, willing to pay? Because you know in football, if someone wants a jersey, they gotta pay up for it. Even in in soccer as well too. Would you I'm ever pay for the number ten? It's not. It's not that serious to me. It's just a number. I'm not gonna pay no man because I already know some of these guys. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. Think about the number tens. They're making bread. So if you want to get some, if you want to take that jersey off them, it's gonna be okay. Gonna Let's be reverse really it. Really keeping those pockets. Let's reverse it then. Say you had the number ten. Lucas comes in. He's like, Yo, I need that number ten. How much you, you? All right, you can have it, but. You know, keep in mind, MLS, they're going to be like, hey, you got to switch numbers. But yeah. let's say. He just had to take you. We just have to go on a night out. He'd pay for it. Okay. Fair enough. That's simple. I'm, I'm, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm simple yeah. like that. I'm simple I mean, like Columbus, that. Columbus, I'll be like, you know, yeah. $500. So, yeah. don't, don't sleep. <laughs> Columbus is kind of expensive. Yeah, don't Not, <laughs> right. Kind of expensive. Hey, trust. Hey, Columbus got some I rooftops, know. too. Uh. Hey, no. Oh, let me let me just let me, let me calm down real quick. But yo, <laughs> Derek, thank you once again. Two cents, FC. The only type of show you are gonna get this type of banter, these type of vibes, unfiltered. Um, but that's our show for this week. Subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC Show. We got a new uh, ticker. And check out our merch at two cents sports.shop. Tweet us your comments on the show and any topics you want me or El to discuss. Thank you once again, Derek, and best of luck with the upcoming season. Uh, we'll be supporting you and we'll be following for sure, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this. This was a pleasure for real, for real. Always love 
you know, talking to some real guys, you know, just, you know, vibing. So I, I appreciate you guys for having me on here. Almost yeah, definitely. I appreciate you joining us, man. Yeah. Hey, till next week, y'all. Peace out.